In an earlier blog post, I took a look at creating a simple form in Drupal 8. And we created this system settings form that lives at admin slash config slash system slash chad for our chad module. What I'm going to do here is continue moving forward with what I started with that settings form and talk about how we can use the new configuration management or CMI code in order to save the values that we submit from this form into the config system such that they can be deployed across environments and so forth. As always, the best place to start with this is taking a look at the documentation on Drupal.org. So if you go to Drupal.org and then you go to documentation, under the developer guides, you can go to develop for Drupal, working with the Drupal API, Drupal 8 APIs, yeah, it's a bit buried, but we'll get there. And then the configuration API in Drupal 8, uh, which is fairly well documented. Under the configuration API, we can start to get a sense of how this system from the perspective of a developer works. We saw in a post that Kyle did that as a end user, I could make changes to system configuration and such on my site and save those. And that, that data is saved in YAML files that I can then deploy across the environments and, and synchronize that configuration. What we're going to do here is talk about how to read and write to those YAML files in a consistent way. A good place to start is this overview of configuration page, which kind of gives a rough idea of what configuration is, the type of data that we're talking about, and also brings up this simple configuration versus configuration entities, which isn't necessarily super clear uh, when you first read it. My understanding of how this system works is that simple configuration refers to really simple pieces of data, a string, the name of something, um, a simple value like whether a checkbox is checked or not, a number like the number 10, the number of nodes that should be displayed on the front page and so forth. Kind of very simple pieces of configuration data, hence the name simple configuration. Configuration entities, on the other hand, are used for more complex data types. A good example of that would be something like a view. A view is configuration. It's not content. It's a bunch of configuration that tells Drupal how to display some particular piece of content. But they're much more complicated than just storing whether or not a single checkbox has been checked. So configuration entities build off of the core entity system and provide a complete set of CRUD hooks for your configuration, meaning that the views module can implement configuration that when things happen, like that configuration is created or read from disk, or when it's deleted, a bunch of hooks are fired and, and other events that my custom module can listen for and trigger code when something happens on a views configuration entity. So I think that's the, the biggest difference between the two there. We're just gonna look at saving simple configuration though in this example. I'm just gonna click the link here for the simple configuration API. This page gives an overview of the format of the YAML file that we're going to read and write from and talks a bit about this um, config class or a config object. The config object is really the core of how we read and write from these YAML files. Configuration is stored in a YAML file, but we don't just read and write from them directly by calling functions like file put content or file get content. We want to use the config object so the Drupal can take care of things like knowing what the format of the file is, knowing how to read and write from it, knowing where those files are stored. And we don't have to worry about those files moving out from underneath us in the background or even changing the format and storing it in the database or whatever the case is. So the config object is in a sense, really a wrapper for reading and writing values from one of these YAML files. So here's the documentation for that. But what I want to do is look at how we can use this in our own code. So if we look at our site again, I've got this settings form, which saves a simple value uh, for this field testing. I want to persist this value and save it to a file. Let's look at how I would do that. So in my code, I've got this settings form, which is an extension of the config form base. I extended the config form base because I knew that I was going to be creating a form that saved configuration data. And it's going to provide some helper utilities for us to make this accessing the config object a little bit easier. If we take a look at the config form base classes definition, you'll see that it's using the Drupal config factory um, and has some code related to that. So I want to kind of quickly explain how this is working. But 
the, the gist of it is config form base is loading a config object for us or the a factory for creating fig config objects so we don't have to worry about the injection part of it. When our form gets loaded and Drupal first goes to create a copy of the settings form, which is an extension of config form base, it does so by calling this create method here, which uses a PHP late static binding in order to return essentially a copy of itself. And when it does that, it's calling the con constructor for our class here and passing in whatever arguments this constructor is asking for. In this case, a config factory. So the create method uses the container, the Drupal services container, to get a copy of the config factory service and inject that into this config form base and by proxy our settings form during the construction of that form and assign it to this config factory um, variable. That means in our settings form, we can access this protected config factory variable in order to get a config factory object, which will allow us to load our configuration data. All of this code here is fairly boilerplate. So whenever you're creating a configuration form, the simple method is to just extend config form base. What it's doing is if we look at the documentation, is it's providing us with a way to get at this dollar sign config object through all of Drupal's dependency container uh, so that we don't ha really have to worry about things like where the code lives or how it's loaded and so forth. We just get to make use of it. So let's do that. Let's make use of it. Back in our form, in the submit form function here, right now this gets called whenever someone clicks the submit button on our form and it prints out the values of what was submitted. What I want to do is save the value of this testing field to a new YAML file. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'll need to do is tell Drupal to create me a config object that is a wrapper for a specific settings file from my module. So let's assume that we're going to be reading and writing from a file named chad.settings.yml. The code to do that looks like this. So what I'm doing is using my knowledge of the fact that my settings form by virtue of being an extension of config form base has this config factory object which I can call in order to create a new config object. I'm telling the config factory when it creates me a config object to load the chad.settings configuration data. This is going to map to chad.settings.yml. It's going to load the contents of that file, turn it into configuration data, and then give me this wrapper object, which I can use to read and write data from it. So the simple thing here then would be to set a value in the config and save it. So let's take a quick look at the code here, or at the documentation. If I go over to Drupal.org again, you can see that there is examples of reading and writing. Here it's showing me that in order to write a value, what I need to do is on my config object, I need to call the set method with a key that I'd like to save and the value that I'd like to save in that key. And then ultimately, I need to call the save method to tell Drupal or this config object to write its data to disk. So let's go ahead and take a look at doing that. First thing I need to do is called the set method. We're going to save the value of our testing field from up here, and we'll just save form state values testing, like so. And then I need to tell it to save. So simple enough, save a value with the key of, or you know, I wanna reference this thing. Whenever I need to look it up in the future, I'm going to refer to it as testing within the chad.settings config object and let's save this value. I'll do that. In order for this to work, we switch back to our site and we can submit our form here. And we'll add some value here like unicorns. So I've submitted the form. It's called my submit function. And I know that because it's, it's called the debug here. It's not actually showing the value that I saved, but that's because I'm not reading that value back in and setting as the default for our form. If we switch to the code again, and we dig down into the um, Drupal sites default files config directory inside of the active config directory, we now have a new file named chad.settings.yml. And sure enough, it contains 
one record with a key of testing and a value of unicorns. If I go and submit our form again and say maybe change that to whales, and then look at the code, you can see that it's updated that value so that it now says whales instead of unicorns. Drupal is persisting our data to this chad.settings.yaml file via the config object. So what if I want to read that data back in and set the default value here? It's a pretty similar process to what we already did. I need to use the config factory attached to my form controller in order to load a config object. So I'll do that like this. I'm just actually going to copy and paste the code. So we're loading a new config factory. We're telling it to get the chad.settings configuration and assign it to this object name config. And then I can read in the data here using the get method. Let me say config get testing, just like that. Save back on my form. If I refresh the page, you'll see that it's now reading in whatever value I've saved there. I could change this again to cats, saves it, reads it in. Great, so that's working. We now know how to read and write data from a simple configuration file. There's a couple other neat things that you can do with these configuration files. I can nest values inside of it. So if I wanted to do something like have um, this save pieces of like data and group them together, I could do so. And I'm going to do a quick demonstration of that. So what I'm going to do is copy this testing form field twice. And I'm going to change one of them to be first name and one of them to be last name fields. We're going to save a first and last name. First, last, first name, last name. And then what I'm going to do is update my submit handler so that it's saving that data for first and last name. But this time, instead of just naming it first and last, I'm going to name it name.first and name.last. I'm telling it to nest these values inside of a name array, essentially. And we'll update this like so. And then I also need to update up here on my um, getters, which are getting the value to say name.first and name.last. Great. So if I go back to our site and I look at, and I refresh this page, I've now got two additional fields here, first name and last name. I can add my name there like so, and then click save. It's saving those values and reading them back in. When I look at our YAML file now, you'll see that it's nested those under a key of name. So I can keep these things a little bit more organized inside of my settings file. That's one thing that allows me to do. Another thing that's really cool about this is how I can read the values back out. Instead of having to call each of these individually, let's say I just wanted to get the value of some name property. Um, I could do something like this. I'm going to load whatever the values are for name into an array named name, and that will contain keys for first and last. And then I can just echo those out like so. Save that. Uh, actually, I'll add a debug here too, just so we can see what this is doing. Reload the page. Nope, oh, we got a mistake. Let's see what's wrong with our code. Take a look at the error log. Call to member function get on a non object. All right, we can fix that. Oh, I just spelled config wrong here. Simple enough. Save that. This time, when we load the page, there you go. You can see it's loaded the configuration into a variable named dollar sign name. And that variable is an associative array that contains all of the nested keys from our YAML file. What's neat is you could nest these any number of things deep. For example, I could go add something to our YAML file like so. Maybe I want to have like name dimensions. 
height, five, weight, 10, like so. I've added some values there. What I will need to do is actually clear the cache for it to, to pick those up and load them, but I can do that real quick. Just adding things directly to the YAML file like that doesn't mean Drupal will automatically see them right away without first clearing the cache. Because when Drupal loads a page and it loads in all of those config files, it's actually caching the data so that it doesn't have to have the IO performance hit of reading those files from disk on every single page load and parsing the YAML into PHP. That said, now when we take a look at it, you can see we've got the name class, or sorry, name variable is a multi-dimensional array with first and last keys for first and last name, and then a nested array named dimensions with height and weight. Um, so this kind of gives you an idea of the ways that you can start to keep your configuration data organized in one of these um, config YAML files. So quick, what we did was we took a look at reading and writing data from a config YAML file using a config object. Whenever we load a config object in Drupal, we want to do so using the config factory. The config factory has a get method, which takes an argument that specifies the name of the configuration that we'd like to load. This typically maps to the name of a file, like chad.settings.yml. Once we've loaded our config object, we use that config object as a wrapper for our YAML file for performing read and write operations on that file. We could also do delete if we wanted to remove a value. Uh, there's a config delete method where we specify the key to delete that value. Anytime we're reading and writing values from these files, we make use of a config object, allowing Drupal to make intelligent decisions about where that file is located, how it's accessed, and so forth, without us having to worry about it moving out from underneath us. Um, so that's a really simple introduction to how the simple configuration system in Drupal 8 works. <laughs>